Hi, this is David and Sylvain, and you're watching, watching loudguitars.com. <laughs> Okay guys, Drew from Log Guitars. I'm here with David and Sylvain from Soilwork. How you guys doing? Hi, good. How's good. the tour been so far? Good. It's been pretty much a week now, no? Yeah. Seven yeah. dates. Yeah. Seven dates Seven so days, far? Yeah. Um, yeah. Why a double record? Oh, uh, because we need to do something different. <laughs> yeah. Like we, I mean, needed, we needed a, some sort of challenge to like, yeah, get ourselves inspired and prove to everyone that we're capable of. And after finishing the record, did you guys sit back and say to yourselves, wow, like 20 tracks later, like uh, quite the accomplishment, like the record is phenomenal. Thank it's you, phenomenal. thank you. I mean, That's cool. Yeah. yeah, we're we're pleased with it too. Like yeah. We're proud of ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Now, you being the new guy on board permanently now, yeah. how involved were you in the recording? I was very involved, yeah. just like yeah. everyone else. Like It was really a group effort. And the writing process as well? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, solo-wise, when you guys are working out what's going to happen per song, do you guys discuss this? Uh, no. Is it something that's just, uh, oh, well, I've played this and I think we'll use this? Like, how does that work for you guys? Yeah, you I mean, that's from the songs I wrote. I uh, sort of, like, I planned the solo parts and I, like, planned the parts that I thought Sylvain would do a, yeah. a good job with, <laughs> like, the, the, the backing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just, like, you got space for it, just do what you want to want to do yeah. on it, and that's it. So there's no real discussion about it? No, no. no really. We discussed some stuff in the studio, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. How much of the writing for the record happened outside of the studio, like while you guys were living apart? After oh, doing all of it. Pretty, pretty yeah. much yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, maybe the vocals, maybe, all right. Uh, no, no, pretty no. much the rest were right. No. Now, Bjorn writes a lot on acoustic guitar when he's doing lyrics, yeah, right? yeah, exactly. So how does that work for you guys? Do you get together in the studio? Or are you sending each other tracks and working stuff out separately and then coming and finishing it in the studio? Yeah, before we enter in the studio, we just uh, yeah share tracks between internet, mm. you know, by internet. And then uh, we work on it when just yeah. before reaching the studio, you know, we, we got like... Um, uh, me, and, me and Bjorn says we both live in Sweden. And yeah, it's more uh, easy for Yeah, yeah we, we, we like collaborated to like physically yeah. <laughs> but like in person so we sat down with guitars and had a few beers and played some riffs so so some of the songs that I that me and Bjorn have, have written together is like more of a old school collaboration but now you you've been in and out of the band on a touring basis quite a bit over the years yeah because Peter's gone away and come back and yeah. now before this record did you find yourself collaborating with Bjorn or with Sylvain to, for the records at all yeah, I mean, I mean, he's playing with us from the 2011. We did the festivals together and everything. So no, 2010. No, eleven. Six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did. Re you did <laughs> for, replacement yeah, yeah. before, but yeah, uh, but, but this time, this in the band, yeah, yeah, yeah. from 2011. Yeah. yeah, so we sort of like started quite early to plan for the record. Yeah. yeah. Now, being involved with the band and having to step into another guitar player's shoes, so to speak, to tour. Did you find yourself going over Peter's parts and learning them exact, or would you take it yeah. in and then put a certain element of yourself, especially for the solo work? Yeah. Live? Well, uh, especially like the newer stuff, or from from um, I don't know how familiar you are with the back catalog, but like from Predator's Portrait and onwards, most of Peter's solos are kind of like there are small compositions, so you can't really. Um, uh, I feel like I have to play. At least, I try to do maybe not exactly what he did, but uh, sort of like the, the melody stuff and everything. Yeah, I try to like replicate it. Um, you guys consider yourself tech guys? No? I think uh, I love Sylvain pedals. is probably more. Uh, yeah, I got more pedals on him. But yeah. That's why I, I try to dance on stage. It's impossible. Okay, I have well, too much pedals. Yeah. I don't know what to do with them. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the opposite. I, I, I hate gear. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I wanted to be there and to work, but. Uh, when it gets too complicated, I get just get frustrated. I've tried so many times to have lots yeah, of pedals, yeah. and I, I always end up just having a noise gate and a tuner. Because yeah. <laughs> okay, well let's start with you then. Seeing as you don't like gear, I, I, I like gear, but I mean I, I'm I'm not a I'm quite I want to be easy on. <laughs> what does your current touring rate consist of? We got um, EVH amps, um, and I have um, Ibanez guitars. And I'm using mayonnaise guitars from Poland, you know. Mm -hmm. You heard about it? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. And your 
with your front end rig is what exactly? I got a um, noise gate. Uh, it's a uh, what is the noise? ISP. Yeah, ISP noise gate. Um, a Geely pedal MXR, and uh, another dry pedal. You know the green. Um, what else? The Wawa. The Wawa pedal. Yeah, tank oh. breakdown. Very good one. Very and good. nothing going through the effects loop really. Uh, just a day. Just as on the noise gate. That's okay. it. Oh, you run your noise gate through the effects loop. Yeah. Okay, so so you, you get rid of the f of the amp, you know. From the preamp. Just just for yeah, for the noise. So that's it. Yeah. I have an ISP gate as well, and uh, in front of the amp, and a uh, uh, TC Electronics Polytune tuner and uh, Tube Screamer Ibanez. Okay. Now, what were some of your early influences, uh, guitar-wise? I'd say uh, when I was growing up, my first big influences were um, like Richard Blackmore and Randy Rhodes. And today, who do you find yourself listening to? Uh, I listen to all sorts of stuff. But I'm a big like fusion fan and, and pro rock fan. So uh, like my favorites right now, guitar wise, is probably like Scott Henderson, Wayne Kranz, and uh, I love King Crimson, especially like Adrian Blue, uh, the '80s, '90s uh, lineup. Right. Okay. That's and you, Silver? For me, when I was a kid, it was like more Eddie Van Halen on the Angus Young. You know, it was the two master for me. You know, I'm. And then after that, like, of course, all the guitar heroes, you know, from uh, Steve Vai to George Lynch to, you know, all this guy. And, uh, yeah, and there are so many good guitar players now. It's like, I can do, do you feel personally like your playing has evolved a lot over, say, the last five years, maybe? Oh, it's hard to tell. I guess, yeah. I don't know. I can't tell you that. You have it's like, <coughs> the more you yeah. The more you get older, the less you asking, you're questioning yourself when you're playing. Just play what you want to play. That's it. Mm. Just, I mean. Do you find yourself in search of new things to maybe practice? Or yeah, learn? exactly. It's just uh, when you're practicing now, it's more like about when you want to do something you want, trying to the best way to do it. That's it. Not practicing other, you know, stuff from the other people. Or okay. Do you find yourself uh, with a certain practicing regimen? No, not really. Uh, um, I mean, if before a tour or before recording or something, you practice what you're supposed to play. Yeah. <laughs> but otherwise, I just I mostly just sit around and play uh, yeah, write songs and so I don't have like any scheduled practice. At least. No. <laughs> I, no. a, I don't always have guitars lying around. I pick one up occasionally when I feel like it. And now, uh, speaking of that, like your process for writing, do you find that uh, that you guys will? Carry an apparatus to record your riffs if you have an idea to have them for future reference. Or would you? Yeah, I, I have my iPhone. And I use that. Oh, you do too. Yeah, I do the same. Yeah. Yeah. Record your stuff. On. So you <laughs> must have a huge catalog of ideas that you have. Oh, I told me I got hard drives full of <laughs> tons of yeah. Now, did you spend craps on everything? <laughs> did you spend a lot of time before the recording of this record doing that, going through ideas that you had? On your apparatuses to weed through for ideas. Uh, for me, for me, um, I get bored with my own stuff quite fast. So uh, I usually, uh, I made up new stuff because <laughs> it's like. But I have like maybe it was an occasional riff that I. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same. I write stuff and then I get very fast boring. You know? It's just after several months when I listen back to and say, oh, this sounds cool, hmm. but uh, yeah. So Have you, either of you found the time to work on any outside projects outside of soil work uh, for you personally, musically? Yeah, I mean, me, me and Bjorn, our singer, we we did a we have a classic rock band like a side project with uh, um, Charlie from Arch Enemy playing bass. Uh, it's called the Night Fight Orchestra. We released it uh, last summer. So, and I, I'm also um, a member of a like old school uh, Judas Priest type metal band called Mean Streak in Sweden. Okay. Cool. Is that uh, an original project or a cover yeah. project? No, it's uh, original. It's just like classic metal. So you keep, you keep yourself fairly busy then? Yeah. How do you guys feel about internet and the music industry and digital download and the freedom wow. of accessing uh, music of artists? I mean, it's cool because everybody now can listen to what you're doing. You know what I mean? But uh, at the same time, see, when you release an album, the first thing you can go is to type the title of the album in Google. And the first thing you find is how to download it for free, you know. So, I mean, this is the way uh, it is. But uh, at the same time, I think people that really like music, although 
really like what you're doing, it's gonna buy the album. Fans gonna buy the album. I mean, I'm the, this way. Um, you know, if I like a band, I'm gonna buy the album. So I guess people do the same. I hope. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. For me, uh, I really like buying records, but uh, yeah. Well, I, I don't do it anymore either. Cause, but I, I still, I feel like I have some sort of moral obligation to not download stuff illegally. So I, I use iTunes. And the, the only thing now is if you're going to buy a CD. But what are you gonna do with that? You gotta put it on your iPhone, <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's become a bit like. Mm. No, but well, of, cor of I, course, I, we, we, we um, uh, of course, I, I don't like people downloading stuff illegally because it hurts all of us in the music mm. business. But uh, at the same time, it, it can't be stopped. I mean, no, you can't no, do anything no. about it now. So no. just, just try to adjust. It's, and, uh, yeah, it's changing. So. Yeah. And the metal fans are like. I feel like, especially when we talk to Sorwick fans when we're out on tour, they buy stuff. Yeah, they they, they yeah. want to support us. So I think, and I think it's like that for many metal bands. Mm. Metal fans are usually quite loyal. Absolutely. Where I think it's hard for like Justin Bieber fans. Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah. think they care. But, yeah, yeah. but I mean. and <laughs> how how has it changed the way that you guys like over the last say five seven years changed the way you guys have done things when structuring tours or merchandise or. or anything basically to try and make up the lost revenue from from records. I mean sales. when you're touring you you live pretty much on the merch on my thing so yeah. a lot of people buy merch. I mean they buy CDs too or the merch too so but uh, yeah of course you don't earn the same money as ten years ago with just CDs, you know. It's like divide by oh, yeah, you, know, you have to be more active yeah. like social media and stuff like Facebook <coughs> Artists nowadays, we have like a, we need to be active on the internet. Yeah, yeah we, we've had discussions with with some people, and basically, uh, as she pointed out, nowadays uh, artists at most levels have to be their own publicist, their own lawyer, mm. you know, uh, <coughs> their own pusher. Basically, it's yeah. no longer just about being able to write and release something and and live on the laurels of yeah. the artist. They mm. really have to work hard at yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, What's next for you guys after this short tour? Do you have any festivals planned? Yeah, this yeah. we're Europe, yeah. European festivals, and then we're probably going to Australia and uh, China, China and Europe in the fall. So. Yeah, very, very, very cool. Guys, thank you so much for taking the time to sit with us. Oh, thank, thank you. Really, really, really appreciate it.